to take a few minutes to discuss the gift wrap outpost project that will be taking place in Walgreens and how to properly assemble it, how to properly merchandise it once you arrive in the store. Uh, these stores were shipped a box that looks just like this. It's approximately 46 inches long by 32 inches wide. It has a broad black band going across the face of it with a 12 and a Christmas tree. The wick number for the display is also listed on the front of the box, and the wick for this particular display is 227158. Um, after you've introduced yourself to the store manager and explained to them your tasks for this call, uh, you'll want to go into the back room and locate this box and move it out onto the sales floor in the seasonal aisle. The seasonal aisle is the preferred location for this display. Uh, the display itself weighs about 30 pounds, so uh, don't try to carry it if you don't feel comfortable with that much weight. This slides really easily on the floor. Uh, once you have it out in the location of the sales floor, you'll need to open this box. And in a lot of cases, you're going to find that these boxes have yellow plastic banding around them to hold the box together. If you run into a situation like that, get with store personnel. Uh, try to borrow a pair of scissors or a box cutter. It'll just make it a lot easier for you when you try to open this box. One of the first things you'll notice when you open the box is that there are some assembly instructions included in the box. In addition to these assembly instructions, you were also sent a mailing, uh, a complete project packet on how to assemble the display, how to merchandise the display, planograms, product images, everything you need to do this project is mentioned in this 11 page packet. After you have the box open, the first piece of the display you'll want to locate is the bottom tray. Bottom tray will look like this. It ships folded in half. It's kind of a glossy red finish. And you'll want to take it out of the box and lay it out to work on it. And when, before you have to assemble this, you open it up so it's not folded in half anymore. You'll want the unfinished side of the cardboard facing towards the top. This is the top of the tray. The next thing you'll notice is that on each of the four corners, there are tabs that kind of come loose from the rest of it. You want to take those tabs, bend them upright, and then also take the sides and bend them in a little bit, kind of crease the perforations. You'll take these tabs and fold them towards the center of the tray. The next step is to take the side lips and fold them up and over the tabs. And these have a tab on the edge of a lip that will lock into a slot down across the bottom. You can see it on this side. So you'll fold it over. You'll lock the tabs into the slots, and you'll do the same thing on the other side. The next step in this process is to assemble the hutch display. The hutches are kind of the shelf components of this. The hutches is where all the products will be placed. So assembling these is very important, and it's also very easy, you'll find. Um, these hutches will ship. They look like this, and you'll notice on the sides of these hutches, there are plastic channels going all the way down. These channels, each of them has an opening, and this opening should be faced towards the top of the hutch. The trick to making this assembly really easy on the hutches is to take each shelf, fold it towards the top, and then there's a little side one you'll want to bend down, just like that. You'll do it on all three of them. And once you've done that, all you do is you'll take the side, fold it up, and then start grabbing your trays. Each of these trays has a plastic guide that will slide into this plastic channel. And it's just line it up and slide it in on all three. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay. After you've done that, you stand it upright and just push down on the shelves to make sure that the guides are firmly sleeted and sleet, seated into the channels. After you've done this, you'll want to take this hutch and place it in the bottom tray that we assembled earlier. Now these hutches will sit in the bottom tray back to back. There's four hutches in total. The next step after you've done this is to attach these clear plastic clips. Now these plastic clips are what holds everything together. So these are a very important component of the display. And you'll notice that there are many open slots going across the tops of these hutches. These clips on the back will go on the right slot and the left slot. And on the side, they'll go in the rear slot. 
So after all the clips are in place, the next step is to assemble the top tray. There's four top trays, one each will be going on top of each of the touches. So when you open your box and you find your top tray, you're going to find that it really doesn't look like anything. It's, it's going to require some assembly, and this is honestly probably the toughest part of building this display. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to remember there's two large holes that are punched in this uh, cardboard. You'll want these facing towards you with the unfinished side of the cardboard facing up. So again, these two holes will be facing towards you. What you'll want to do, there are perforated lines right here and right here for these two tabs. You'll want to pull those away from the perforation on each side and then bend these two tabs towards each other right in the center of the tray. The next step is to take these two ears that protrude and bend them downwards. After you've done that, you'll take the remainder of the bottom, what's left, and all you do is you just fold it up and over these two ears that are sticking up. Just like that. You've got the front lip done. After this, all you have to do is push down the side panels and then fold the back panel over and lock it into place. On the bottom of these trays, you're going to notice that there's three tabs that are made to be pulled out just like this so they stand off of the tray. These are the tabs that will be used to attach the trays to the tops of the hutches. Uh, a quick tip on this is just remember to pinch kind of along the edges of the tabs and it'll make it easier for them to slide into the slots that are on the tops of the hutches. And we're going to go ahead and do that now. You'll notice as we saw earlier with our clips, there's some open slots on the tops of these hutches. You'll find it's easier sometimes if you kind of open that slot with your finger a little bit. Be careful not to give yourself a paper cut when you do that. But you'll start with the back tab, and all you do is you just slide it into that slot, and then you repeat the process to the two side tabs. After you've done this with all four top trays, the assembly of the display is done. Uh, but before you place any materials, you'll want to place the labels that are supposed to go in the appropriate location. Page 9 of this packet is your first planogram. There's a planogram for each side. So there's two planograms plus a product reference list. You'll notice that each planogram location has a number, product description, the Walgreens item code or the WIC, and the UPC. So you can also, uh, for an image of this, go to your product reference list. So we'll look for number one on the product reference list. You can see it right here. Tray number one is the Wexford brand invisible tape, three quarter inch by 300 inches. It's got the UPC, the WIC, and then it has an image of the item. It'll make it easier for you to locate the item in the store. Now, uh, but before you place the product, we're gonna place these shelf tray labels they're an adhesive label, so they're, they're just a, a large sticker is what they are. And we're going to start with the upper left side. So right here, when I look at this and I consult my planogram, we can see that it's 3M Scotch Tape. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to find the label that says Scotch Brand. These are brand specific, not item specific. So you want to make sure that the label you're placing is the same brand as the product that will be going on that display. So you'll grab a label that says Scotch Brand. You'll peel it away. And then to attach it to the lip, all you have to do is line it up with the top edge of the tray. Once it's on there, just kind of use your finger to iron it out and make sure there's no wrinkles or bubbles in the label itself. After the label is placed, you'll notice there's a blank spot right here. This is for the Mylar or the shelf tag. You'll want to get with a member of store personnel, store management, let them know that Mylars need to be printed for these locations. The Mylars are printed based on the WIC. After you've done all this, you place all your labels. You'll want to, again, locate the product, place the appropriate product according to the planogram you're provided. Once that's completely done, uh, if you have a minute, please take a photo of the display. Uh, you'll upload that photo into JET when you uh, do your reporting that night in JET. And uh, photos are great. Walgreens loves to see them. And I just want to take a minute and say 
thank you very much for everything you're doing. We know you guys are really busy. Uh, you guys are doing a great job for us out there in the field. Thank you.